So the thing is too, you know, the people who are going through this type of thing with the targeting, um, you don't understand how significant the difference is between people who actually own their own home and people who don't. There's a one headlight car on the left there, coming down with that. It's a good time to go out, right? In this wet snow and drive around. Um, yeah, you don't understand like how how important that is. If you own your own home, you can get through this stuff. I mean, it's not easy, but but it's so much more difficult for people who are renting. And you know what? The people say, "Oh, well, you shouldn't move. You shouldn't keep moving, right?" You, you can't help it if they're telling you you have to leave a place because they will make up excuses and reasons why you to, to try and force you out of certain places if you're there for a while. So the one place I was there for a year and a half. And there were continued attempts to, to do things to try and provoke Um Because they wanted me to just get fed up with it and leave, right? And I didn't do that because I knew they were doing it all intentionally. They said, okay, if I leave, they're just going to start again somewhere else. So I, I toughed it out there continually for a year and a half. Until it came to the point where they just started making things up and saying like, well, oh, the city says they have to do inspections at the place. Like where the landlord there at the other place was just making stuff up. And then he's saying, Can't, could you just not get another place? It's not working out here or whatever. Even though I had a lease there. And I didn't have to leave, but I said, okay, I'll, I'll leave. So the people who say that too, oh, you shouldn't move around or whatever. Well, try dealing with this situation. You, you have no choice. You have to move in that situation. So it's easy to speak about these things on the outside when you're not dealing with it. And, uh, you know, people who own their own homes and who are dealing with this, it's difficult for them too, I know that, but it's, it's twice as difficult if you're a renter because they will continually do things to try and force you out and force you to keep moving. Part of it's to drain your financial resources. The other part is, especially if you record all these things, they don't want the people all in that area to see what's happening to you, right? So, so that's another reason why they want you to keep moving because they can get you to a new place and start people doing it again. But if you're putting up videos about it, showing what they're doing, there's a, there's a chance that some of those people can see that and see they're being manipulated into doing it. So therefore, they have to keep you moving and moving, and uh, that's what they want to do. So again, it's very easy to speak about these things when you're on the outside and you're not dealing with it. And uh, if you own your own home, you know it, it, it's tough to deal with these things too. But it's it's not nearly as tough as when you're a renter because they want to make you homeless there's no question that's one of the main goals and um, right now I'm just paycheck to paycheck and uh, trying to get a second job I'm continually being employment blacklisted um, and it, a lot of it is because of the videos I put up exposing it too but I'm not gonna back down with that they're the ones doing it and uh, I'm not gonna back down with it it's, it's the truth and this is what's happening and um, so they can do whatever they're worst, whatever they want to do. But uh, I've got that evidence for two and a half years. And um, if they weren't doing it, there'd be no video uh, videos to put up, right? So um, it is what it is. And uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it, if you own your own home, it's not nearly as hard, and you can get through this stuff. I mean, sure, they're going to do things to sabotage your home and try to do that stuff like that, but essentially, you own it. So, until they come to the point where they literally start seizing property, which, who knows how far off that is. I mean, at least you've got that. That's your sanctuary. They can't force you to move from your own home. Sure, they can have the neighbors all around harass you and ostracize you, but you can still, who cares? Just, you know, go about your life. I can get, you can get through with that. But when there's people right inside the same place as you doing that, at every chance they get, it makes it difficult. And uh, it's very easy to stand on the outside and say, you should have done this, you should have done that, whatever, right? Um, hindsight is twenty twenty. Everyone has their opinion on these things, but uh, somebody's going to come here, I'm sure. You know, it, it's very, that's the thing. If you're not dealing with the situation, you can point... Yeah, so if you're not in this situation where you're a renter and they're trying to continually force you to move over and over again, even when you don't want to move. I mean, I could have 
stayed at that other place for a while despite what they were doing because I was just getting used to it and I was desensitized to it. I mean, whatever. So if they had that guy come out, I would stand by the car, I'd just record it. But so they knew that. They saw I wasn't going to back down. I was just going to stay there. So they had to, f to make up these lies and say I was antagonizing people there when I never was. And, and saying things like, oh, the city's going to come in and do an inspection and they might just force people to leave if it's not. Like, for what? So, so they were literally at that point. And the city is a part of it, too. Um, so, again, it's not a situation where I want to keep moving. And uh, I understand that when you move, sure, it's going to just keep happening, probably. But what are your options, man? Like, if they're forcing you to move or doing things over and over to force you to move, you really have no choice, right? So that's the thing is people people who are going through this and they own their own home can sit there and pontificate and say, well, if you're targeted, you don't move, you stay put. It, to some extent, I agree. If you can, if you can, sure, you should, you should stay put. Because otherwise they're going to think, okay, we can just force you out of wherever you're just going to, you know, a little bit of harassment and you're going to move. You're going to have to deal with the harassment wherever you are if this is happening to you, I understand that, right? But where those people are wrong to say that, those people who own their own homes and trying to pontificate and saying, well, they're dealing with it or whatever by not moving. Yeah, of course, because you own your own home, you know? And not everyone's ha fortunate enough to have that situation, you know? So um, obviously if I had that situation, I would, I would stay there and I wouldn't move and that would be correct, the correct thing to do. So yeah, like if you own your own home, you shouldn't move. Don't let it force you out. Just, just you know, the neighbors are going to do these things. So what? It's hard. It's difficult to deal with. But you know, um, they're right about that. But th where they're wrong is they don't understand the situation of someone who's a renter who has who's being attacked this way. Because you have a lot less advantages if, if you're a renter. Um, so yeah, that, anyway, that time, the second time they sent her, which was in March, a couple weeks back, uh, she's rambling and talking to herself continually, but again, being lucid and making sense, like having conversations out loud. She did say a couple things that seemed to be kind of direct conversation too, on that occasion, uh, regarding the police and whatnot, which just to let me know that she had, you know, the whole thing was concocted with her and the police and... It was all just set up as an acting skit. I knew that already, of course. So then on, uh, what was it, Friday night, she shows up as I'm leaving for work down there at the other stop there. She shows up there as I'm leaving, gets on. And that time she was, comp she didn't say anything other than when she got off. All right, what are they gonna have this, this actor? Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Right as I'm arriving, they got this guy standing there. Look at him, check this out here. Look at who's outside here. 
Watch this. <laughs> Notice him? Look at, look at, look at, look at. As I'm arriving home, look. Who's outside? That same guy. Notice him. Yeah, he's gonna. I'm gonna walk back down here. See, you can see they, they, they've sent that guy to stand outside. The guy from the Dominican Republic, the stalker, who they continually have uh, banging on the floor. Today they have him standing outside of the house, so I'm going back this way. I'm going to walk back down here and uh, let him stand outside there for a smoke. This is all intentional. I'm not going to walk by him while he's up there. Let's walk down here briefly. He's making like he just has to go out and have a smoke the moment I come home, right? All done to antagonize. Actually, screw that. I'll just go. I'll just go in. Oh, look at, look at, the, now he's coming down here. Look at it. Look, check this out. Now he's following down. So they gave him the instruction to follow down here. Okay. So now I'm walking this way. I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna cross the road and walk back the other way. You can see he's coming behind me now. So initially they thought I would. When I saw him there, I would just go in. And he was out there for a reason to evoke some sort of a response because they know. Again, I've spoken to him twice about noise harassment. Now he's following behind me. When, when they saw that I wasn't going to go in. So he's trained in these things. I'm crossing here and I'm going back now. So I'm crossing here and I'm going to go back. <sighs> Take note on the left side. That's in there. See how that's done. He's trained in these things, you can see. So he's waiting there right as I come back. They were thinking I'd just walk in with him standing out there, and then uh, when I didn't, they sent him to walk. Well, I was walking up that way, so to walk behind me. Now you can see. So, like I said, I predicted he's going to be partaking in these things regularly. That's what he's there for. So he doesn't work at all, he's always there. And then when I come home, he goes and stands out front. And they're hoping it would provoke some sort of a reaction again because they have cameras in front of the house, right? So they're hoping I'll say something to him. But uh, not going to do that. Not going to play his game. When he comes home, when he comes back, he's going to start banging things down on the floor, right? Oh, I guess here again.
the grocery store here. I think I got a few minutes still. Ah, oh, look at this. Where did they get off the bus? <laughs> See that? Ambulance right there as soon as I got off the bus. Dancing nurses right on, right away. Now they're going back to dance around in a, in an empty hospital. Okay. There they are. Working hard as always. <laughs> they didn't put the siren on there. Notice the other, uh, during that street theater, they had going on. As the ambulance arrived, oh, here's a one headlight right there, right here, after the uh, ambulance. As, as that ambulance arrived, um, it turned on the siren, shrieked it, just as it came past me, and then it turned it off, and the road was otherwise completely empty. So there was, <laughs> it was clearly intentional. It was, it was kind of funny, I know. You've seen enough of this stuff, it's just, you just laugh at it. It's, it's ridiculous, but yeah. So there they are again. The ambulance showing up there as I get out the bus. Perfectly timed, perfectly synchronized, no siren though. Got a little bit of extra time this morning. I'm gonna go out and get a look at this Masonic Lodge back here. Post office isn't open till 9, so I can just walk from there. I want to get some video footage of this lodge from close. Previously, I just got it on the bus, so it's just down here. I'm just going to walk down here. We'll probably see some the first responders or something. Um, who knows? Maybe we will. But I got to, yeah, I'm going to turn back. I'm just going to get some footage of it, and then I'll turn back. I, I got to go up, drop something off the post office, and it doesn't open from nine, so. Uh, let's walk back here. The previous footage I got of that lodge was kind of, you know, on the bus and it was moving, so I just want to get some footage of it, just to show that place. It's kind of creepy looking if you see the backdrop of where it's located and all this. Oh, I see the cops along the way as I walk back here. Yeah, police right there. See them? The police right there. Yeah, I'm just going to, uh, it's right here, it's just on the left, just on the this side of the street here. You can see where it's situated, in kind of like a wooded area with the woods behind there. There are some residential dwellings at a fair distance behind. I'm just going to get a glimpse here. Looks like the uh, Seven six seven. Oh, they don't have it at seven seven seven, huh? Interesting. Let's just take a look here. Here it is, Temple King Solomon. So that's, uh, and they have the times when they meet and all that too, huh? Interesting. Let's see that there. There it is. It's not. It's not too big of a place. So let's get a look at the side here. Although inside maybe maybe around the back it's a bit bigger, but it's gonna get a glimpse here. Okay, you can get a glimpse of the side. Yeah, it's just okay, so it's not really extended. Let me see if I'm just gonna walk down here. This is not on the property. It looks like an old place too. And uh oh yeah, no, it's pretty small. That is quite a small place. I thought maybe there was some sort of an extension around the back or something, but no. It's kind of just like a wooded area there. Yeah, that is a small lodge, definitely. Now, I think a lot of the people who are more high level within the police and the politicians and these people probably go to the, the Grand Lodge of Quebec, which is located in Montreal. But, uh, yeah, this one here. King Solomon Temple, 1952. But then it has 1866 on the inscription as well. So maybe they updated it in 1952. But the inscription shows 1866. And then uh, King Solomon Temple, 1952. And look at the crack in the window. <laughs> Apparently somebody's not too happy with this place, huh? <laughs> there it is, anyway. Now, again, that could be one of their own people doing that. They do stuff like that a lot where they'll they'll set up fake stuff where one of their own people will like attack at one of the lodges they did that a while back in vancouver where they had they had their own people sent in to burn down the lodges 
because, you know, people were waking up to the type of crime that these people are involved in and how it's basically a, a front organization to insulate organized crime and all these other things. Um, so, among other things, that just scratches the surface. But, uh, so when that starts to get out there and they catch wind of that, they'll send their own people and they'll hire some idiot to set a fire and then the uh, heroic Masonic Fire Department will come in and pull their acting skit and act like heroes, like they're putting it out. And then they can present this image that they're under attack and that they're victims. And most of the people who they use in those false flag events, the first responders, are all Masons. So, they, of course, that's done because they're going to keep their mouths shut and they're going to keep their vows, their oaths of silence and their oaths to Masonry above all else. So that's why they utilize them a lot and uh, most of these first responders they have involved well in the false flags I think almost all of them the first responders who they use and those are, are Mason so. but uh, in general in the, in the organized stalking operation in, as well of course it's a Masonic operation Masonic uh, silent dagger so surprise surprise that when you see that they're using all of those same people <laughs> that they use in false flags and uh, their little stage events. So yeah, that's what they'll do if, if people are starting to, you know, uh, wake up to some of this or they sense that, you know, there's people waking up to their corruption. Uh, in coordination with the media, they'll stage, they'll stage something like that. Or, it, it, sorry, it won't be staged. It'll be real. But they'll have somebody literally commit a crime and then it'll be coordinated and they'll pay the person off to do it. And then they'll cry victim, play the victim, like the way Hitler burnt his own, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> building then, just, just after, uh, when they took control in 19, or just before they took control in 1933. The same situation, same tactics, right there. So, these people, everything they do is deceit, lies, and manipulation. Nothing is done through honesty and integrity. And everything is inversion too, so. This is an interesting house here. I, I kind of thought that this place here, I don't know whether it's abandoned, it might be. It kind of looks like that house, and if you've seen the Amityville Horror, <laughs> those movies, it kind of looks like that house with the, with the windows that look like eyes. It's very uh, old house. Uh, it looks, yeah. I don't think anyone lives there now, but yeah, look at that, eh? Wow. Yeah, it does. It kind of looks like that Amityville Horror house. A little bit, huh? So, um, yeah, well, it's a little bit of a distance here, but I gotta go to the post office so I get some time. Probably that, too. But it's definitely a very modest place. Like I said, in Quebec, the Grand Lodge of Quebec is located in Montreal. Much larger building. I think that's where a lot of the high-level people go. Oh, this is that guy. See across the street there? That's that guy who who's who makes the noise above me. You can see him over there with his hat on. So he just happens to be walking across the street here as I'm coming home. Take a look at him there. That's the guy who I showed in the video who's banging on the ceiling and making all the noise. And all the noise. Now I showed in the other video how he was coming out right as I was coming home before, waiting out front for me, and now he's on the other side of the street there, you can see him. Make a left feet watch. Because I have my phone with me today too. That's him there. Creepy guy, man. What a creep. He's gonna go back and uh, bang the vacuum down. That's him there. He's looking over to trying to find the open button. He's going to He got he got his text message. What a creep. Like I said, you see the other video where he was waiting in front of the house when I came, when I was about to arrive home from work, and when I saw him in front, I turned around and went back, just to avoid having any contact with him. <laughs> so as soon as I started going, he starts walking behind me on the same side of the street, 
So then I again crossed over and then just walked back toward the house after he had left. And it would look weird if he came back from there, but you can see him turning down there now. Stalking, obviously. So not only does he, you know, do the noise harassment thing continually, he, he does that type of stalking thing too. That's why they have him here. That's his purpose. And uh, he follows instructions like a slave, like most of them do. Could well be involved in some type of drug trafficking, this guy. I don't know. But uh, he, he's a little bit too well off to be staying in a place like that. You can just tell. So, yeah, he went. He just happened to be coming back from his stroll right as I was coming up here. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. That's the cop, sir. Let's get a glimpse of the car number. Just before the bus, too. Missing tail light there. It's right there. Car number 69 there. So twice this morning they showed up to stock as uh, I was walking down the street there. And then today, you can see, look at the street here. No one here at all. Clearly that's intentional and being done for harassment and intimidation. synchronize it the street here. That's it. Interesting. 
just parched the tops. <laughs> That's like the same type of chicken I thought too. It was eating today. I don't know. I don't know if that has anything to do with that. Maybe it does. That's what I was eating at uh, <laughs> lunch. The exact same chicken, and they just happened to put at the top the uh, the thing that <laughs> exits. Exactly the same type too. In one of those plastic containers. They will do stuff like that too, just to mess with you. Yeah, that's what I had. Like the last, well, last meal I had <laughs> this afternoon was some of that chicken, fried chicken in the container like that. Bought it from the grocery store, exactly the same. And then they put it on top of the uh, turnstiles. <laughs> <Some exit. laughs> oh, just the silly things they do, right? No, is that could that be random? I guess so, but it's <laughs> that's exactly what I ate uh, lunchtime. And, uh, just in exactly the same container too <laughs> and they put it right on the edge of the uh, exit area where they knew I'd be exiting uh, I'd like to see the camera footage to know how long it's been there I doubt it's been there for long it's probably put there just before I was about to come out <laughs> oh, it's funny man I mean <laughs> yeah like it's just it's possible somebody just put that there or whatever, but it's a strange coincidence that that's exactly what I was eating. It's another thing they do, but that's just to let you know that they're watching or whatever, that they have cameras. I already, I mean, like, I don't know that already. But yeah, that's, that's, that there is to show, you know, that they saw what I was eating today. And they're watching on the cameras. That's got to be a fun job, whoever that is, that sits there and monitors the cameras of someone in their home. You know, when you're illegally spying on people watching them in the washroom and whatnot like you imagine being that person who does that that's got to be yeah you know that's a pretty messed up job where your job is to watch them as they go to the washroom on it with a hidden camera you're gonna grab it there huh yeah that's <laughs> but that's what that was that's they put that there because that's what exactly the same package that i had a container exactly the same type of chicken i had for lunch last meal i had before <laughs> oh man Silliness, but that's what they do. Things like that. I've still got some more of it at home. I may have some of that tomorrow, actually. Pretty good. It's not good for you, but you know, every now and then, some stuff like that. Every now and then, doesn't hurt, I guess. There's the ambulance there. Perfect timing, perfect synchronization, right as I come up here. So they had the chicken, and then they had the ambulance. There you go.